What is cervical, thoracic, and lumbar radiculopathy? There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves that exit from the spinal cord, and these nerves exit out into the entire body. If one of these nerves is affected at its root where it exits the spine and the spinal cord or anywhere along its pathway, it can lead to a number of symptoms. Cervical radiculopathy refers to the cervical spine. And when we look at the cervical spine, it is the neck. And the cervical spine acts as the bridge between the brain and the rest of the body. The cervical spine also has to support the weight of the neck, the head, and facilitates the neck's ability to turn the head sideways, up and down, you know, lateral bending. And when you look at the cervical spine, if a nerve's affected in this area, it can lead to compression and it can cause symptoms that occur in the neck the shoulders, and it can be pain that actually radiates into the arms and hands. And cervical radiculopathy can also affect the range of motion of the cervical spine. Now, unfortunately, since we are affecting the cervical spine, typically what's said is that anything above can affect anything below. And since this is the highest area, we know the cervical spine can affect things below that, like the thoracic spine and lumbar spine. But classically, when we look at a cervical radiculopathy, it's normally causing problems that we see in the upper extremity, shoulders, neck, and it can also lead to pain going up or numbness going up into the head or the base of the skull. So it can be pain, it can be numbness, it can be weakness, it can be abnormal reflexes, or all of those. When we look at thoracic radiculopathy, this refers to the thoracic spine, which is in between the neck and the lower back. The thoracic spine is the largest spinal section, and it can make it vulnerable to a number of conditions. Something that we also look at is called hyperkyphosis. We know a uh, thoracic spine is supposed to have a normal kyphosis, but a lot of times from because of technology or long periods of sitting, people can become excessively rounded. And when they become excessively rounded, this can lead to affecting the nerve that exit the, the areas in the thoracic spine. And when we, if we look at this, this can lead to upper or middle back pain. It can lead to chest or torso pain. It can lead to nerve pain that radiates around the ribs. And again, when you affect the thoracic spine, you can affect anything below it. So this is where the thoracic radiculopathy comes into play. When we look at the lumbar spine, we're looking at the low back. And this is between the thoracic spine and the actual pelvis. And the lumbar spine has to support the weight of the entire trunk and all the spinal structures structures above. Also, the, the vertebra here have to also deal with motions of bending and normally deal with affected mostly by lifting and twisting motions. We also know the lumbar spine can also be negatively affected by long periods of sitting, which is very common these days as a result of computers and technologies and everybody kind of living a very sedentary lifestyle. If a nerve is affected negatively in the, number, in the lumbar spine, symptoms typically mean they're going to have low back pain, low back stiffness, pain that radiates into one part of the body and lower body, meaning lower leg, lower thigh, lower hip, lower glute. It can also lead into numbness and weakness into the different uh, ones, one leg versus the other. It can be sciatic pain, which is a nerve that exits the low back that goes down the back of the leg into the foot. And it can also affect the uh, lumbar movement or flexibility. Now, when we look at radiculopathy, there are many causes affecting spinal nerve function. This can be anywhere from spinal degeneration to injury to presence of an underlying spinal condition. Spinal degeneration is something that we also have to look at because it can affect the discs. And when we look at degenerative discs, they can also affect the health of the nerves of the nerves that are exiting that area, which can lead to radiculopathy. Now, when we look at these areas, like things I just mentioned, normally these are a result of abnormal alignment. When we look at alignment, alignment affects all this. It can lead to degeneration. It can lead to herniated discs. It can cause other things like adverse spinal cord tension as a result of compression, resulting bone spurs, spinal stenosis, scoliosis, hyperkyphosis, loss of lordosis in the neck. These are all things that have to do with alignment. And when, when you lose the alignment, you're prone to having these things happen or you're, de or you're predisposed. As a result of, of long periods of staying out of their normal alignment, it starts to affect the environment of the nerve system. And when you affect the environment of the nerve system, you affect the, the way the nerves are actually working. And this can lead to this radiculopathy concept. Lastly is also things that affect the actual health of the spine, like osteoporosis, meaning it causes bone density issues. And this is where the spine can collapse and in fracture or compress upon itself. This ultimately affects the alignment again, which is capable of causing nerve 
damage and nerve pressure, which can affect the environment, which can lead to radiculopathy sim symptoms. So once we know what's causing it, and normally there's an alignment issue in all these causes, we have to address the underlying cause to restore the normal environment for that nerve. And typically this requires us realigning the spine back into its normal position to help and preserve the integrity of the spine and help try to undo some of that negative effect that's been occurring to the nerve system over time. And this typically involves treating the spine in a structural way to remove pressure from the nerves that are affected. Now, this can be done many different ways, but normally this is using condition-specific chiropractic care to address the nerve compression caused by structural misalignments. And this unnatural loss of normal alignment can be restored. Normally the, the area that's being affected, the environment can change and the nerves can begin to heal and function properly. Many times this is combined with physical therapy and exercises to better provide strength and support for the area that's been affected. And this can help increase circulation to discs and well-being. And a lot of times patients can use therapies to help decrease pain like hot or cold, therapy, they may take over-the-counter medications. And even those, these may help with what they're feeling. The bottom line is that you have to address the cause. And typically the cause has not only some alignment issue that's affecting the environment, which is leading to an abnormal function of that nerve system and leading to that kind of compression type of feeling of radiculopathy. So even though I'm not against you know, uh, pain types of treatment, I'm more about treating the cause of the problem because we know radiculopathy could have a wide range of causes. And normally the wide range of causes can be related to the shape of the spine. But the bottom line is we have to address the cause more than just the symptom for patients to have long-term uh, improvement. And then lastly, if the condition is being caused by some repetitive behavior, like abnormal sitting or abnormal lifting that's repetitive over time, we have to address what's causing the misalignments to constantly occur to stop the problem from returning over time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.